I greet you in Jesus' precious name. It's just so wonderful to be with you on the program again. Please relax. Take up that cup of tea or coffee and listen to the Word of God for about four minutes because I've already taken one of your minutes. You can see how peaceful these cattle are lying around. Can you see that? Let me give you a quick agricultural lesson. And please, farmers, just bear with me. If you see a cow chewing the cud, like that cow lying down there, see her? What she does, she's got three stomachs. So she gets up in the morning and she eats grass until her tummy is full. And then she sits down and she regurgitates the grass and eats it for a second time. If I have to check cattle and, and I'm in a bit of a rush, if I can see a cow lying down like that one and the one directly behind her, chewing the cud, I don't even have to go there because she is totally content. Godliness with contentment is great gain. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 6. How much is enough? You see that cow lying over there? It's got a full stomach of grass. That's all she's worried about. The Lord even says, the birds of the air have got nests. Foxes have got holes, but the Son of God has got nowhere to lay his head. The Lord Jesus Christ, the creator of heaven and earth, didn't even own a house. And yet some of us are so worried. We're just not satisfied with what we've got. And some of us have got more than one house. Some of us have got more than one coat. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Beware of serving two masters. I've met some people who say, you know, all I ever want is a farm. That was me. When I get a farm, I'll be happy. No, I wasn't. Then I got a second farm, then a third farm. And then I realized I'm, I'm, I'm barking up the wrong tree. I'm looking for contentment in the wrong place. You see, contentment doesn't come from owning material things. Contentment doesn't come from material success. Ask any Springbok rugby player, swimmer, soccer player. They'll tell you, I got my first green and gold blazer and I put it in the cupboard. Then I got the second one, I put that one in the cupboard. Then the third and then what? So what? I'm not saying it's wrong to be an achiever, but I'm saying that you must look for contentment in the right place. And that comes from God. Some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Psalm 20 and verse 7. We really need to stop chasing the wind. The wisest man and the richest man that ever lived said that. He spent his whole life building up an empire, Solomon. And right at the end he said, vanity, vanity, all is vanity. He said, I've made a fortune, I'm going to die, and somebody else is going to take it and probably lose it. So what we need to do is we need to glorify God in our lives and then enjoy Him forever. That is the meaning of life. You've heard me say that before. That's in the Westminster Confession. So let's be like that cow over there, just quietly chewing the cud. There's a few more now. <laughs> Thank God for every day. Thank Him for your life, your health, your family. The fact that you can smell the fresh air, see and hear. Great, great privileges. And then the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will become your portion. Until next time, my dear friend. May God bless you and be content. Goodbye.